بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يسلم توحيد المسلم الموحد لله تعالى إلا بالإيمان بالقدر خيره وشره ولذلك قال السلف الإيمان بالقدر نظام التوحيد ومن يخالف الرب جل وعلا بقدره فيقول لماذا قدر لي كذا وقدر لفلان كذا فلم يستقيم توحيده وإن زعم أنه حامل لواء التوحيد والعقيدة نعم So Sheikh Sheikh Abu Uthman Muhammad Al-Anjiri Hafizahullah began by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending peace and blessings upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he mentioned that a person's tawheed, a Muslim's tawheed is not accurate and is not accepted accurately except that he has in him iman, his faith, his correct faith, his correct belief in the qadr, in the pre-decree, it's good and it's evil, it's bad from it. And the Shaykh, he went on to mention, so the Salaf used to say, Imanu bil qadr, having your belief in the pre-decree, is the nidam al-tawheed, is the correct way to actualize a tawheed, singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all your worship. And the one who opposes his Lord, the one who opposes his Rabb, in the Qadr, in his belief in the pre-decree, by saying, why has such and such been pre-decreed for me? And why has such and such differently been pre-decreed for someone else? And here he opposes his Lord, as the Sheikh mentioned, even if he carries the flag of a Tawheed or he carries the banner of calling to singling out Allah in worship. Fadal Sheikh. Yes. Fadal Sheikh. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sorry. ولذلك روى البيهقي بسنده عن الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى أبيات قال ما شئت أي يا الله كان وإن لم أشأ أي وإن لم أشأ أنا فيقول ما شئت كان وإن لم أشأ وما شئت أي أنا إن لم تشأ يا الله لم يكن هل ممكن ترجم هذا ممكن للبيت مرة ثانية شيخ بحاول إن شاء الله بيت منه. نهاية البيت مرة ثانية شيخ بعد إذنك ولا شيء تعانا يقول البيت روى البيهقي بسنده عن الشافعي هذه الأبيات ما شئت كان وإن لم أشاء ما شئت أي يا الله كان يكون وإن لم أشاء أنا أيها الإنسان وما شئت أي أنا أيها الإنسان إن لم تشأ يا الله لم يكن خلقت العبادة على ما علمت أي أنك يا الله 
قد خلقت العباد بعلمك ففي العلم يجري الفتى والمسن فبالعلم الذي قدره الله عز وجل للفتى للشاب وللمسن كبير السن يجري مجرى حياة هذا الإنسان على ذا من أنت أي على هذا الإنسان من أنت وأعطيت وهذا خذلت لم يوفق وهذا خذلت وهذا أعنت سبورتم وذا لم تعن فمنهم شقي فمنهم شقي ومنهم سعيد ومنهم قبيح ومنهم حسن هذه الأبيات يرويها البيهقي عن الشافعي قالها الإمام الشافعي نعم So, Sheikh Lanjir, Hafidullah, and uh, dear brothers, I will request the Sheikh to try and send me these uh, other lines of poetry so that I can work on its translation even more accurately with the right meanings. But I'll go ahead and uh, give you the meanings as I uh, understand from the Sheikh right now. I will send it now already. Inshallah. Uh, have been sent now. Taib, Sheikh. Perfect. So, the Sheikh Hafidullah, he, he goes on to mention, he said that from Al Bayhaqi, who, rahimahullah, who mentioned these lines of poetry from the Isnad, from the chain of narration, from a Shafi'i, rahimahullah, that what Allah has willed, as uh, the poetry goes on to mention, ma kan, and as Sheikh mentioned, hafidhullah, that what Allah has willed will be, even if I didn't will it from myself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalaqt al-ibad, Allah has created the worshippers upon that which, upon based upon knowledge. So upon this knowledge, you find that the people, the young and the old, the young and the old, be. yes, will be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the slaves with knowledge upon the, the uh, uh, Allah has created the insan, the human beings, and Allah has given them from who and will be. Allah, Allah give, it, give part of them and other part yes. didn't give them like that. Gave part the, of them and didn't give the other part what he gave the first part or the previous part. Exactly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported one and didn't support another one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his wisdom has willed from the people to be happy, from them to be sad, and from them to be um, miserable. To be cute and to be... To be cute and to be... Uh, the, the physical appearances, to be beautiful, to be cute, to be uh, not so cute, ugly. All of this is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pre-decree of Allah. قد علم الله تعالى ما سيقع من عدد من سيدخل الجنة يعلم الله جل وعلا من سيدخل النار وهذا العدد لن يزداد ولن ينقص علم الله قائم وكذلك أفعالهم وما سيفعلون وكل ميسر لما خلق له 
والأعمال بالخواتيم في النهايات والسعيد من سعد بقضاء الله والشقي من شقي بقضاء الله وأصل القدر سر من أسرار الله تعالى في خلقه لم يطلع على ذلك ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل أي لا جبريل ولا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا غير النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قد اطلع على القدر وهو سر الله والتعمق في ذلك ذريعة الخذلان أي إن الذي يسأل ويعبد ويتفلسف في هذه الأبواب دليل السقوط والخذلان وسلم الحرمان وهو من الطغيان فالحذر كل الحذر من ذلك سواء بالنظر إلى هذا الموضوع أو بالتفكر أو بالوسوسة فإن الله طوى علم القدر عن أنامه فإن الله تعالى قد طوى علم القدر أي أخفاه عن أنامه عن عباده ونهاهم عن مرامه ما يجب الدخول في ذلك كما قال تعالى لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون Yes, Nabi. I know today is very tough, the translation. But Isaac Allah khair. You are doing well. Oh, yeah. But the last question, I don't want to ask you. Do you want to ask me? I'm going to ask you in the WhatsApp. I'm going to ask you the whole question. So the fact is, all the fact is that 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 So, Shaykh Al-Anjari, Allah, he goes on to mention the affair of Al-Qadr is from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what will be, especially as Shaykh mentioned, what will be from the numbers who will enter paradise, Jannah, and from the numbers who will enter the hellfire. And Shaykh Al-Anjari, Allah, mentioned that this number doesn't increase nor does it decrease. And the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stable forever. And it will be easy, as the Sheikh mentioned, it will be easy for those who've been pre-decreed to do what they've been to do, it will be easy upon them to do that. So the one who has been created and his affair is happy, it will be easy for him to achieve that, and so on. And the Sheikh Hafidullah, he mentioned, once end results, his reward is recognized by his end results. Al-A'mal bil khawatin. His reward, his, his final reward is by his end results. And the affair of Al-Qadr is, is from those secrets, from the secrets without which Allah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the angels, not the prophets, not even Jibreel alayhi salam. These are those secrets from the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from those secrets is the affair of Al-Qadr, the affair of the pre-decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one is prohibited to get into deep thought, into depth about this. And what does it mean by getting into deep thought about this? Is asking questions about Al-Qadr, is trying to understand it in their own way. And the Shaykh Hafidullah, he said that this way in meaning, to get into this type of depth in the wrong way, is the way of the khudlan, is the way of the one who doesn't aid the religion. The way of the one who doesn't aid the religion by this. The proof of this is that this khudlan, this person who doesn't aid the religion, this is the reason for him to fall down. Sukut, this is the reason, reason for him to fall down. So be warned of this prohibition. Don't look too deep into the affair of Al-Qadr by way of deep thought by way of looking into this affair, 
by way of opening your, your ears to whisperings regarding this affair. Qadr is from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has prohibited to enter into this. And as the Sheikh mentioned, don't ask about that which, don't ask about that which you do and they ask about it, as Allah mentions in the Quran. A clear proof to show that there is a prohibition about these affairs of the secrets with our which Allah with, with our which with with our with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nam Shaykh, Fadal. Alan Saakra Alaikum Hadithaini Adimaini Li Sharh Walil Ijaba Ala Teswa Ulat Kat Terid Alaikum Mimma Samatu. So the Sheikh said, I will now read to you two tremendous hadith from the Prophet وسلم, which will further uh, give you depth, correct understanding of that which you heard from me previously today. An Abi al Aswad Kala Kala li Umran ibn al Hussein Radi Allahu anhu Umran Sahabi Radi Allahu anhu. قال لأبي الأسود أرأيت ما يعمل الناس اليوم ويكدحون فيه أي عمل المسلم وسعيه لكسب المال أشيء يقول عمران بن حسين رضي الله عنه أشيء أشيء قضي عليهم ومضى عليهم من قدر ما سبق أي قد قد كتبه الله فيما سبق فيما هم عاملين أو يقول عمران بن حسين رضي الله عنه أو فيما يستقبلون به مما أتاهم به نبيهم وثبت وثبتت الحجة عليهم وهنا يسأل رضي الله عنه وأرضاه الصحابي يسأل هذا التابعي فيقول له الأعمال التي نقوم بها لكسب المال ولكسب العيش أهو أمر مقدر؟ أم هو أمر يستجد أو أنه أمر يستجد تفضل So the first hadith um, Shaykh Al-Anjir Hafidullah he mentioned is from Abi Al-Aswad who said that from Imran Ibn Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Shaykh mentioned that Imran Ibn Hussain was from the companions where he said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu to Abil Aswad, do you see today what the people are doing? In meaning, by way of what the Muslim is doing to get, to get income, to get money, or to get uh, his um, uh, sustenance, his food. And he asked, is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for them, what they are getting? Or is it something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has promised them? The Sahabi here, he is asking this Tabi'i, are these actions which they're doing by way of getting money, by way of getting Aish, food, sustenance, is it pre-decreed or is it something mustajid? Uh, mustajid, uh, uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, careful. Yani it's something Allah ma katabahu. That's something Even that Allah, Allah has not. Even Allah not know it. No. That's something, as the Sheikh mentioned, is something which is not, or they don't know about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know about it. It's something that they're just getting. فقال فقال الأسود بل شيء أبو الأسود قال بل شيء قضي عليهم ومضى عليهم فقال الصحابي أفلا يكون ظلما أفلا يكون ظلما فضل So the um, uh, Tabi'i Abu Aswad, he said, 
قد مدى عليهم or it's something قضي um, عليهم نعم قضي عليهم that it was written for them so the companion Imran ibn Hussein he said is this not oppression is this not oppression نعم تفضل شيخ فقال التابعي فقال التابعي ففزعت من ذلك فزعا شديدا وقلت كل شيء خلق الله وملكه يده فلا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون انظر ماذا قال ففزعت من قول عمران رضي الله عنه أفلا يكون ظلما يقول ففزعت من ذلك فزعا شديدا وقلت لعمران رضي الله عنه كل شيء خلق الله وملك يده فلا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون فقال عمران رضي الله عنه يرحمك الله إني لم أرد بما سألتك إلا لأحرز عقلك إلا لأحمي عقلك إلا تبرتكت عقلك من شرور وسوسة الشيطان ومن الفكر الذي يخرجك عن ما كان عليه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه ثم قال رضي الله عنه إن رجلين من مزينة أتى يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله أرأيت ما يعمل الناس اليوم ويكدحون فيه أشيء قضي عليهم ومضى فيهم من قدر قد سبق أو فيما يستقبلون به مما أتاهم به نبيهم وثبت 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 الحجة عليهم فقال النبي لا بل شيء قضي عليهم ومضى فيهم وتصديق ذلك في كتاب الله عز وجل ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها نعم So the Sheikh Habibullah, he goes on to mention that the Tabi he said, Rahimahullah, that I was astonished with the statement of Imran, a great astonishment. I was amazed. Is it not that everything is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he repeated that you don't ask. Indeed, those are those who ask. You don't ask about what you do. The ayah from the Quran. So Imran ibn Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Yarhamakullah, Yarhamakumullah, that may Allah have mercy upon you. I didn't intend by what I said, rather except to protect your intellect and protect you and make you firm in your understanding and protect you from the whisperings of the shaitan and to be upon that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon, upon the correct understanding of this affair of Al-Qadr. And Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that a people had come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and had mentioned to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they saw a people walking and they had asked them Asked the Prophet وسلم, the similar um, wordings as we, as we covered before that is it not that what the people are doing by way of gathering, uh, collecting their own money or by way of 
uh, getting Aish. <clears throat> and I'll just read it out to you as Sheikh al has said it to me, sent it to me now. Um, فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ so this, so Yes, yes. فَقَالَ لَا شَيْءٌ قُضِيَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَمَضَى فِيهِمْ Rather, it was something which was written for them and it was decreed for them. وَتَصْدِيقُ ذَلِكَ وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا uh, with the ayah, with the meaning of the ayah. That, that al-insan muhtabarun fa fi nafsihi ta'a wa fi nafsihi al-fujur ala amri Allah. The meaning of the ayah, that insan at the same time he is tested to do, um, he is tested and from them. Al-khayr wa shar. He's tested to in in both of both of them. He's tested at the same time in in controlling himself from doing evil and at the same time in uh, actualizing that which is good. Now, Sahabi Umran ibn Hussein yuridu an yuhasina Abu al Aswad min shurur al iradat al aqliya wa al nafsiya wa min wasawis al shaytan. لأحمي عقلك أي أحصن عقلك وأصون من استدراج الشيطان لعقلك فيوقعك الشيطان في شباكه شباك الشك والشبه الشيطانية واضح؟ نعم شك واضح So the Sheikh Hafid Allah he goes on to mention and he went on to mention this companion here this companion, he only wanted a good intention to prevent this tabi'i from the whisperings of the shaitan and to get to get this tabi'i to be strong from the whisperings and from the doubts of the shaitan. And the Shaykh Hafidullah, he mentioned this is a methodology which is istibaqi, a methodology of pre-prevention, a methodology of pre-prevention from this companion. As the Sheikh mentioned nowadays, to prevent ourselves from this dangerous disease, we recommend, or it is recommended, to take a vaccination. This is a methodology of prevention. You take it before you get the disease. So this was the methodology of this companion to protect this tabi'i and protect the tabi'i's intellect from the distortions of the shaitan and to protect this tabi'i to be affected by the doubts of the shaitan. وهنا يعلم الإنسان وهذا وجه الشاهد من الكلام أن يكون في سلامة وفي بعد عن إرادات الشيطان فالإنسان ضعيف ولذلك أقرأ عليكم الحديث الآخر وهو قال الديلمي ابن الصحابي فيروز الديلمي رضي الله عنه أتيت أبي ابن كعب فقلت له وقع في نفسي شيء من القدر فحدثني بشيء لعل الله أن يذهبه من قلبي قال الديلمي ابن الصحابي فيروز الديلمي رضي الله عنه بقوله أتيت أبي ابن كعب فقلت له وقع في نفسي شيء من القدر فحدثني بشيء لعل الله أن يذهبه من قلبي فالديلمي تابعي يسأل الصحابي أبي 
رضي الله عنه أرضاه عن مسألة القدر لأنه وقع في شيء منها فأراد من الصحابي أبي بن كعب أن يعينه يعينه ليخرج من هذه الوسوسة في موضوع القدر تفضل So the Sheikh, he went on to mention, Hafidullah, that here you find that the insan, he knows what he needs to do to protect himself. And he knows that he has to keep himself safe and has to know where the shaitan might go. So you have to protect yourself from these doubts because the insan, as the Sheikh mentioned, is weak. The insan is weak. Then the Shaykh Hafidullah, he went on to mention that he'd like to quote the next hadith. And the next hadith is from a Daylami. Tabi'i is the, is the Tabi'i. Ibn Sahabi Fayruz, the son of the Sahabi Fayruz, a Daylami, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, I came to Ubay ibn Ka'b. Ubay ibn Ka'b is a, uh, from the companions Sahabi. of the Prophet. صلى الله عليه وسلم رضي الله تعالى عنه فقلت له he said I said to him something has fallen inside me meaning by way of doubts regarding the affair of a pre-decree regarding the affair of Al-Qadr so narrate to me something tell me something لعل الله so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may take it away from my heart and the shaykh mentioned that this tabi'i daylami he went to Ubay ibn Ka'b, the companion, after he found that something regarding the meanings of Al-Qadr, he had some issue in understanding it. Waqa'a shay'in, it could mean that he had some issue in understanding it or some doubt regarding it. So he went and sought help from the companion Ubay ibn Ka'b so that Ubay could help him, could aid him in, a, in the correct understanding and protect his heart from deviation. فقال أبي بن كعب رضي الله عنه لو أن الله عذب أهل سماواته وأهل أرضه عذبهم وهو غير ظالم لهم ولو رحمهم كانت رحمته جل وعلا خيراً لهم من أعمالهم ولو أنفقت مثل أحد مثل جبل أحد ذهباً تصدقت على الناس ولو أنفقت مثل أحد ذهب في سبيل الله أنفقت المال في سبيل الله كجبل أحد ما قبله الله منك حتى تؤمن بالقدر كل هذا العمل الصالح لن يقبل منك حتى تؤمن بالقدر وتعلم أن ما أصابك لم يكن ليخطئك, ليخطئك وأن ما أخطأك لم يكن ليصيبك ولو مت على غير هذا لدخلت النار قال الديلمي ثم أتيت ابن مسعود عبد الله بن مسعود فقال له مثل ما قال أبي ابن كعب ثم ذهب الديلمي إلى حذيفة ابن اليمان فقال له كما قال له ابن مسعود وكما قال له أبي ابن كعب نفس الإجابة ثم ذهب الديلمي إلى زيد بن ثابت الحين هذا الصحابي رقم كم؟ أربعة فقال له ما قال لأبي بن كعب فأجاب زيد بن ثابت بحديث النبي مثل ما أجاب أبي وابن مسعود وحذيفة بن اليمان فهذا نهج النبي وهو نهج الصحابة في الإجابة على هذه المسألة نعم نعم 
So the Shaykh Hafizullah, he went on to mention that Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he replied, and he said to Ad-Daylami, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to punish all of the people from the creation under the sky and all the people on the earth, he would punish them and he would not be oppressful upon them. He would not be an oppressor upon them. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was merciful upon everyone from the creation, if Allah was merciful upon everyone upon the creation, then this is something that was good for them. And Ubayr ibn Kaab, he goes on to mention that if you were to give in charity, you were to give in charity, like you were to give in charity in gold, the amount being the amount of Uhud, the amount of Uhud, which, you, which the brothers and sisters who've been to Medina, they know there's a mount of Uhud there, a small mountain, a hill. If you were to give in charity to the likes, the weight in gold, to the weight of, to, to the, weight in gold of the Mount of Uhud, in the path of Allah, charity for the sake of Allah, it would not be accepted from you, it would not be accepted from you up until you believe in the pre-decree of Allah, you believe you have Iman in Al-Qadr. And Uwe ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned, وتعلم, and know what has befallen you is befallen you which was written for you, not from something that you have necessarily done. And what you've missed, again, is not something which you were being protected from, rather it was written for you. And if you died upon, and that's the meaning of the wordings of the companion, and if you died upon anything other than this, you would enter the hellfire. So a day, let me, rahimahullah, the tari, he said, then I went to Ibn Mas'ud, the companion, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said exactly the same thing. And then a day, me, rahimahullah, he said he went to Hudayfa ibn Yaman. And he said exactly the same thing, exactly the same wordings regarding the affair of Al-Qadr and the same advice. Then a day, me, rahimahullah, said, he, I went to Zayd ibn Thabit. And Shaykh Al-Anjari, hafidhullah, he said, yeah, what number companion is this, brothers? It's number four, the companion number four, the fourth companion. Regarding the same affair, فَهُدِّثْنِي So he narrated to me from the Prophet wasallam exactly the same thing. So Shaykh Al-Anjari, Hafidullah, he said that this shows you, this shows us that this was the methodology of the Prophet wasallam in understanding the affair of Al-Qadr. This was the methodology of the companions of the Prophet wasallam. Now. إن الله يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله لا يحمي عبده المؤمن من الدنيا وهو يحبه وهو يحبه جل وعلا كما تحمون كما تحمون مريضكم الطعام والشراب تخافون عليه فالله عز وجل يحمي بعض عباده بعض عباده من المؤمنين من الدنيا كما يحمي الإنسان مريضة من بعض الطعام فهذا فضل ونعمة من الله فقد تمنع من شيء حماية لك مما قد يصيبك لو فتح عليك والله سبحانه وتعالى إذا أحب العبد حماه سواء فتح عليه أو أمسك عنه فهناك من الإمساك خير له وهناك من الانفتاح خير له فهذا بعلم الله وهنا نختم بهذا المعنى أن المسلم 
يؤمن بالقدر أنه من الله جل وعلا ويؤمن بشرع الله ودينه أي أحكام الشرعية فالمؤمن يؤمن بالقدر الذي قدره الله للبشرية وللخلق ويؤمن بحكم الله وتشريعه ودينه إن الحكم إلا لله ويعلم بأنه عبد مملوك لله جل وعلا ويجب عليه الاستسلام ولكن هنا نبيل نقطة مهمة جدا ولكن لا نعتقد كالصوفية بقولنا بأننا كالريشة في الهواء تتحرك بما يعني أراد الهواء لا نحن نؤمن بأن الله قد قدر ما قدر ولكن علينا أن نبذل الأسباب وهذا فرق بين أهل السنة عن الصوفية فالصوفي ماذا يقول؟ يقول أنا كالريشة في الهواء نحن نقول لا الله قدر ولكن علينا بذل الأسباب وهنا الفرق بيننا وبينهم أما النتائج فبيد الله فأنا أذهب الطبيب وأعمل وأعمل وممكن النتيجة تكون سلبية قد بذلت الأسباب أما الصوفي يقول لا ما في أسباب أنا كالريشة في الهواء وهنا الفرق بين العقيدة السنية عن المنهجية الصوفية نعم So the Sheikh Hafidh Allah, he said, Sheikh Al-Anjali, just so that we don't uh, elongate this anymore and to summarize, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his worshippers from the dunya, from this dunya which they love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the worshippers. And this is the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his worshippers from this dunya like he protects a patient from certain food. So the Shaykh Hafid Allah, he said, this is how the affair is, that some of the worshippers, some of the worshippers, they need protecting from certain things, even though they like it. And this is from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes a person is prevented from something and that is good for him. And sometimes something is given for them and that is good for them. And sometimes a person is prevented from something because it might become a trial for them and that is good for them. And sometimes he is given something and something is opened up for him because that is what is good for them. So to be withheld from something could be something good for you. And to be given something, it could be better for the other person. And the Muslim, he has Iman in the pre-decree. And this is what's required from the Muslim, that he has belief in the Qadr. And at the same time, he has belief in the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pre-decreed everything. And at the same time, he has belief that all the commands are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh pointed out to me, he said that this is something important, dear brothers. We don't believe like the Sufiya believe, this deviant sect, that we are just nothing but feathers in the wind. And we move as the wind's direction moves. Rather, the belief of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah is that we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pre decreed everything. But at the same time, we take the steps and we work hard towards it. Towards. We take the steps and we work hard towards it. And the end result, the nataj, as the Shaykh mentioned, is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we work hard towards it. We take the steps. We should not be like the Sufiya, who say, I will not take any steps, and they hope for the right result. Rather, the Muslim, he works hard. The Muslim, he works hard. Well, here, 
أريد أن أقول ترك الأسباب خدش في التوحيد ترك الأسباب خدش في التوحيد والاعتماد على الأسباب كلية شرك بالله ترك الأسباب نقص في توحيد العبد وخلل في توحيده وعقيدته والاعتماد الكلي على الأسباب شرك بالله نعم Hamdul Sheikh said, Hafidullah, that here I want to say something. That leaving off, leaving off, taking the means and working, leaving off, taking the means and leaving off the asbab is something the Sheikh gave few meanings. It could be something which is deficient. It's tainted. Your tawheed is tainted. It's deficient. Leaving off the asbab, leaving off working, leaving off taking the means. It's deficient, your tawheed, your aqidah is deficient, it's tainted. And on the other hand, reliance only upon your means, thinking that you by working hard will lead to the end results in meaning. Reliance only upon the means, reliance only upon working hard. This is associating partners with Allah. This is shirk billah, as the Sheikh mentioned. Naam, tafadhal, Sheikh. Wa izakum Allah khayr. Ida fi su'al, tafadhal. The Sheikh rounded off with that, and if the brothers have any questions, uh, the Sheikh said he'll take the questions now. Just to um, let the brothers know, I'm not sure how long this uh, Zoom uh, recording carries on, um, so we'll carry on till it lets me carry on. Yes, Brother Yusuf. You've uh, unmuted your, uh, uh, you've taken off your camera, but not unmuted the mic. Yes, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have a question regarding uh, on zakah. Shall I ask you? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Sheikh, uh, actually a Muslim woman has a, a jewelry, more than 20 midgal for an adornment. She is not working and her husband is an employee, but he has a loan. He is paying off his loan on a on monthly basis from his salary. After the loan payment, she doesn't have any savings. Somebody told him that the person who has a debt no need to pay the zakah. That's why he could not pay the zakah on his wife's jewelry. Is it correct? If it is wrong, she wants to rectify the FI. 10 years zakah is uh, due. Please clarify. What I understood from you clearly that the husband got a loan yes. and the wife she got uh, jewelry gold correct you want to say here that the husband and the woman and the wife they are both of them together in correct. sharia no they are separately this is the money of the wife and the loan it's belong to the husband so they are Two issue here. Okay. The issue of the husband, this is he don't supposed to take from his wife the money what she got as a gold or anything because this is belong to her. Mm, okay. You don't suppose to mix it as a family. Okay. The husband okay. he's the, the, the responsible about the wife, food. Uh, living, uh, everything, and the money which belongs to the wife is belong to her 100%. You're supposed to not look at it. Okay. You don't have the right to look at it. Totally wrong. Okay. This is his, this is his, her own money. Okay. And you don't supposed to look at it at all. Okay. okay. There is a question here. Can she give from this zakat to the husband? Okay. The answer, if the husband got the money, 
even this loan he got, he's, he's rich, this man. He got a house, he got salary, but he took this loan for certain things. Let's say car as example. So yeah. what I want to say, the loan nowadays, it will not show that he is a poor guy. Okay. And also, I will study the case and I will let Nabil to write it for you and to send it. When the husband can take the zakat of his wife and here the wife become the upper hand to the husband. Okay. She is giving him zakat that he is poor. That what does it mean? Am I clear now? Yes, Sheikh. <laughs> when, when the husband accepts the zakat, it means he's a boor. He is miskin. So the wife, she give him. She is above, above, above hand or the hand which above is hand. above him. Yes. Am yes. I clear? Yeah, yes, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Sheikh, uh, she, she wants to pay the, I mean, uh, she, she has to pay the 10 years jaka because she has not uh, paid since 10 years because of this, this confusion. How she can uh, deal this matter? 10 years jaka is due. Let me study it and I come back to you. Okay, Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh, regarding the same, uh, I have one more clarification. If you can add a later on, okay. Otherwise, if you can clarify now itself. Uh, actually, the, I, I read the one hadith. The basic principle is to pay the zakah of gold in gold, silver in silver. Does it mean the part of the jewelry, or, I mean, gold should be taken out to pay the zakah? No. To if, you, if, you have, if you have a gold jewelry, let's say worth today in the market $100. Uh, dollar. So she will pay two dollar and a half by currency of dollar without the gold. As example, let's make it in this way. The, the gold worth ten thousand dollar. The gold okay. worth ten thousand dollar. Okay. This is what does it worth today? So she's okay. supposed to pay two hundred fifty dollar cash as a dollar currency. She don't supposed to sell from her gold. Is it clear? No, Sheikh, not clear. I repeat, I repeat it. it again. If she got jewelry gold, if she got jewelry gold, which is worth in the market today, ten thousand dollar. Okay. Clear. Yes. We will take two and a half percent from it. Correct. The ten thousand dollar. What is the Two and a half percent is two hundred fifty dollars. Two fifty, right? So she pay two, cash two hundred fifty dollars, and the gold remaining with her, she didn't take from it anything. But Your she pay cash. Basic, okay. uh, yes. Am I clear? Am I clear, brother? Or there is a doubt with you? Uh, Sheikh, voice was broken. I could not hear you. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm saying she pay dollar two hundred fifty. She don't Correct. take from her gold. But if okay. she don't Got have, if she don't have two hundred fifty dollar, she sell okay. from the gold which is worth two hundred fifty dollar to sell it. Oh. it. She sell it to cover the two uh, two and a half percent as the zakat. Perfect. I understand. But, but if she got two hundred fifty dollar, she can pay it. Yeah, I understand. Without touching the gold. Okay, Sheikh. Zakala khair. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, brother Douglas. Yes, Fadal. If you unmute your mic, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan, brother. Alhamdulillah, kif halakum ya shaykh? Alhamdulillah. Ahlan, ahlan, ahlan. Now, I have a, um, a question that's unrelated to the topic. May I ask? Go ahead. And now I'm so, uh, so uh, 
I purchased um, a pair of sneakers uh, for the E and a pair of Adidas sneakers, right? They're a pair of Adidas. And then the next day I, after I purchased the sneakers, I found out that the sneakers was, was uh, they, they are, they're Adidas, but it's a, they was made to support uh, pride, like gay pride, which is an um, a organization in America, like, you know, for, you know, uh, some for gay people like the to, 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 you know uh, support some type of uh, the, the gay rights basically. So the the sneak I didn't know that and, and then to tell uh, uh, a brother he he was going to buy some and he found out the late so that's what it was and then he let me know and I googled it and that's what they the dealers made like a addition like it's like in the support of gay pride. Now um, when I purchased them I didn't I got them because I liked them I liked the colors. They don't say gay pride, but it is. That's what they are. Was made to support. Is is it is uh, is it permissible for me to um wear these sneakers? I'm thinking, brother. Nah. Did they add the profit? I mean, if the Adidas would you buy it before ten dollar and today ten dollar, so there is no difference in price. Or there they add a dollar, they sell it today eleven dollar. Uh, no, no, no. Um, it's the same price. If it's same price, they want to take from them money, them, them, them margin. They want to take from them margin, which is already there, right? Said so, um, they, they made I, a whole... I repeat my point. I repeat my point. Yes. As example, this company is selling yes. this product. Yes. Ten dollars one year back or six months ago. They did a, a promotion. They say, today we will sell it $10 and we, t we will take from our margin and we will give it to the church or to give it for this kind of people, what you said. Yes. Or, or I don't care about this. Okay. I buy from them, but I will not accept if they add $1 and I will pay it just for this. If it's from the margin, I am. I don't care about it. This is the margin. But okay. if they add one dollar, this is the question mark. Am okay. I clear? Yes, absolutely. To give it, I uh, thank no, you. No. Thank you, Shukran. Barakallahu uh -huh. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if they add if if they if the if the um other people getting proceeds from it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I will make it clear for you in this example. If they say. Today we are selling this ten dollar. Tomorrow we will sell it eleven dollar. Ten dollar as it is, and one dollar we will take um, it from you, yeah. and we will give it to the uh, church. We will give it to the temple. We will give it to the, the let's say to the people which you said. This is something not acceptable because okay. this is direct from you to them. But okay. if they want to take from the margin. I don't care about where they will put the money. This is not my responsibility. No, Am no. I clear? Yes, you're clear, Sheikh. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. That's it. In the end, the Sheikh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Thank you, dear brothers. We'll end the session, inshallah.